Ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching our station at the entrance to Main Street, USA, gateway to the seven theme lands of the Magic Kingdom. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Hello and welcome back to Behind the Dreams. It's been a long time. It's been a long time since I've done the show. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and uh, bring this back. I have a new co-host with me here, uh, Jack Seepersout. How are you today, Jack? Hello. Doing well. Uh, you know, it, it's been a good start to the day and I'm excited to get started talking about Disney. Yeah, it's been a long time. I got to flex these muscles again, you know, the Disney muscles while I'm recording yep. here <laughs> because, you know, uh, for anybody that's followed our journey here, the show was originally with my sister. Um, she's kind of been busy a lot doing a whole bunch of other things. Um, so I had started moving on and doing some episodes I've shared on here of To the Infinity Saga and Beyond, uh, our Marvel podcast. I shared some of these on here, which actually got a lot of listens. So thank you for that. Um, I even put, I think, one of the Pot Awakens episodes on here. Uh, but the last episode we actually did of the parks was from March of 2020, almost two years ago to the day where we talked about Rise of the Resistance, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, and Avenger Campus News. Um, as Avengers Campus was starting construction. And I knew at that point that uh, I think I even mentioned in the show that like, I don't think this is going to finish construction right away here. I think they're going to have to pause it because of COVID. This was like um, when we record it was like uh, my sister was in the parks on the last day, that Sunday before they closed it. So like Sunday wow. was the last okay. day in the parks and then they closed it for Monday and then we didn't know when the park would be back. And, you know, we kind of all thought at that moment, we, what, uh, it's closed down for two weeks and we'll be back. And uh, that's not how, how it happened. And we started seeing, nope. you know, the falling apart of the college program, which actually really just got recently restarted again. And, um, and they have a beautiful new facility at uh, Flamingo's Crossing for the college kids lucky bastards uh and then we had uh you know eventually they did complete avengers campus jack has been to avengers campus um yeah. and what this episode is going to mostly be here is just kind of picking up where we left off uh we really didn't miss that much with, with covid going on um you know star cruiser just opened but this episode is mostly going to be about introducing jack uh, we have a I have a questionnaire for Jack here, and then we're probably going to switch to a bi-weekly release where we'll release every other week, and we will. Um, I know really what I want to talk about next episode is I really want to kind of get thoughts on Genie Plus. I want to go over some of the reviews that we're getting for Star Cruiser now, um, which you know of course both of us were not able to afford, so <laughs> we we're not. <laughs> going to star cruiser uh and i probably won't unless they lower the prices at any point um but yeah just kind of a nice introductory episode here for jack and to say we're back you know the michael jordan um maybe the tweet for this will just be the michael jordan just we're back with a link to the uh a link to the show and nice. for jack who was probably not even around when michael jordan played basketball no nope, definitely not <laughs> that means he quit for a bit and then came back and his uh, his press release was, I'm back. That was it. Um, yeah, so we are going to get started. But I want to ask you, I, I didn't put this on the questionnaire, so my bad. But okay. just kind of, what kind of got you into Disney? Um, I know your family's been going for a while. When was maybe the first time you took a trip? Stuff like that. Yeah, uh, well... I think the first time we went on a trip to Disney was when I was three. We went to Disneyland uh, 
it was I, th I think uh, my aunt and uncle were getting married in Las Vegas and uh, we decided or my parents decided, well, you know, Anaheim's not too far away. So let's take a day trip over to Disneyland. And so that was the first time I went to to there and uh, been going there kind of ever, ever since. Like uh, there's been very few years where we haven't gone to one of the parks. Uh, we got a DVC membership in 2010. I want to say so that ramped up that a little bit, but uh, you know, I think I think the main thing that got me into Disney in general, though, is just like watching the movies and like the TV shows that were on when I was like little. I I remember uh, when I was like five or six, the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse uh, started airing, uh, and you know, I I remember like my brother, sister, and I we we uh, got pizza and got to eat in front of the TV uh, to to go. Uh, to go watch the premiere it was it was a huge event uh you know that uh so that was uh that, that was kind of that, that's one memory that i really remember but also just watching you know all the classic uh disney movies or for me the the classics were a little different but uh like you know watching the disney renaissance movies like uh, aladdin lion king uh, little mermaid all, all of those kind of kinds of movies and uh getting into it through that that's so crazy. I had to look up when Mickey Mouse Clubhouse came out because I was like, there's no way it came out when you were five or six. But yeah, it did. Because um, yep. <laughs> you were born in 2000, right? Right, right. Okay. Yeah, 2005 was the pilot. And then the first episode, actually, like the first season was 2006. Um, so yeah, right around there. And uh, yeah, for me, I was in uh, high school at that yeah. age. So I was like, <laughs> this was not something I usually watch unless if my cousins were watching, you know, like my or my nephew. When my nephew was born in 2009, uh, I got to watch a lot of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse at that point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so that, that's crazy. But yeah, the, the classic movies are, are a lot of the same um, for me when I was growing up, you know, watching Aladdin, Lion King. I mean, those were actually coming out of the theaters when I was yeah, born, yeah. after I was born. <laughs> but, you know, like, uh, I, we still probably didn't really go to the movies a lot as a kid, you know, like Aladdin came out when I was one. So I wasn't in the theater <laughs> for that one. That was the, uh, whenever it came out on VHS and, um, which interests me because I know VHS used to take a lot longer time. So now I need to look up like when would have been I, the first time I could have actually seen Aladdin. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say, uh, this, this will make you feel less old potentially, but I did, in fact, watch most of those Disney movies on VHS. So good. There, there good. you go. I, <laughs> yeah. I, they weren't on DVD yet. So there, there, there you go. There's a bit of continuity between it. Yes. Okay. So the first VHS release for Aladdin was September 29th of 1993. And the movie came out in November of 92. So now we kind of go only three months without a movie being released on Blu-ray. Uh, back then, it was uh, almost a year all the time. Yeah. <laughs> which is crazy. Um, absolutely crazy. Now, yeah, now I, and I own probably a million copies of Aladdin, <laughs> you know, the VHS, the DVD, the next set of DVD line, then the, the next Blu-ray line and all that kind of stuff. Got a whole bunch of those. Um, okay. So let's get into the first questions then. your favorite park. Now this could be, I know you've been to Disneyland and Disney world. So if you have, um, an overall favorite park out of those six, but also if you want to tell us your favorite Disneyland park, your favorite Disney world park, you know, whichever. Well, uh, you know, there's only, there's only one favorite park for me really. And I'm representing it in, in, in this recording. I've got the Epcot 35th anniversary world showcase hat on because my favorite park by far is Epcot. Uh, I love both the parts of the park, you know, I, and I, I know it sounds kind of weird, especially, especially, uh, you know, for people who don't know me, but I really like the edutainment model. I, I, I really like learning. And so like, I, I would always really enjoy going to Epcot and because it had fun and also learning because I was kind of a weird kid and wasn't always, uh, happy to miss school. So, uh, you know, the, the, this was a good excuse, I, I guess for, for me, you could say, but, uh, you know, learning, I, 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 I think the best way to describe it is just I'm a nerd and that and that just makes sense there. Uh, but, you know, uh, learning all about the history of communication from Spaceship Earth, learning about gardening and living with the land, 
learning about imagination from figment which i never got to see the original one i've only seen the one that it currently is so uh i know it's it's considered not as good as the past ones but i don't even really remember the original at this point like i think i remember one scene in it like when i you know when i think back (laughs) um and yeah my wife didn't realize either that this was a um the second ride (laughs) you know she was like uh you know, she just thought I loved Figment, I guess, because of this ride. And I was like, no, no, <laughs> no. this that's not the one. Figment uh, one used to just be everywhere. Like you used to be able to meet and greet them and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I really, I really like those. And then, you know, all of the attractions that aren't about education in Epcot are awesome as well. You know, Test Track was always one of my favorites, even before the car customization aspect was added to that. Uh, Soarin' is always a good time. Mission Space can be fun. Uh, and then the other part, uh, World Showcase. World Showcase is like my favorite section out of any f- Disney theme park. I I really like just learning about other cultures, engaging with people from those places. So that was just a cool way to be able to, you know, engage with those other cultures of the world and get to talk to people actually there. I remember since I took French all throughout middle and high school, I, I would go to the French pavilion and try and practice my French with, with mm-hmm. people there. And it was yeah. always like really nice to to have He's that opportunity. German. Yeah. It, it's, it's a cool experience, you know, just getting to walk around and see what other cultures have to offer is a cool opportunity and not something that you can easily get everywhere in the same way that Disney provides it. And well, you know, uh, Epcot, yeah. Epcot is the reason I did the college program. So I used oh, really? to, yes, I, I, Epcot used to be my favorite park. Um, World Showcase was one of my favorite spots. And when I was, yeah, okay, so we got to go back a long way. Okay, when I, <laughs> growing up, one of my first crushes, Emma Watson, right, from Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I love the accent, right? So uh, I would go to the English pavilion and the German pavilions and just talk to the girls that worked there all the time. And um, especially once I started getting into soccer, I could have conversations with them about uh, teams around the area. Um, I remember this girl from like, uh, her name was Charlotte. She was from Stoke on Trenton, but her favorite team was Manchester United because of her father. And I was like, oh, come okay. on. But <laughs> yes, I used to talk to them and kind of, I guess, flirt with them as awful as I could flirt uh, before I met my wife. And then um, I, I would ask them how they, you know, how, how does the program work? It's different for international students than mine, but they, they kept telling me, yeah, just go ahead and apply, like see what happens. And, I started following one of the college program accounts and uh, not long after one of those trips, I came back home and uh, they were like, applications are open. And I just was like, yeah, why? like, why not? Like, I'm not going to get picked, but you know, like, why not? Then I got picked for the interview. Then I did the interview and, you know, you do like a phone interview. Uh, we do like a test then you do like a phone interview. And then after that, um, I got accepted. So um, it was all just because of talking to people at World Showcase and being interested on how that, you know, like how that worked and um, did it twice. So, yeah. And uh, another thing about Epcot, though, like be beyond that, do you remember Interventions? Because, yeah, that yeah. that place that that was that was one of my favorite places. I to remember go in there, in, you know? Interventions. I don't know if you know this at all, but they, like these have a, I mean, they still had it for a bit near the end, a, a wall of like video games. I was going to mention, yeah, the wall of video games with all of the movie tie in games that they that they had. Yes. Yep. And the one that used to really stick with me is their Haunted Mansion game. And they had like that in Innoventions for a while. And I played it and I bought it while I was down there on PS2. Mm-hmm. And my cousins had like a Tahoe, like a like a Chevy Tahoe, I guess. And they had where you could, like screens in the back of their um, things that you could, uh, they had a PlayStation hookup in there. So like leaving the <laughs> park, I had like this Haunted Mansion game and we're like popping it into the PS2 and I'm playing it like in the back of a truck. But uh, that's the one I really remember. And then they started having a lot of like, I think they even had like Madden and stuff there at some point, which was odd. Yeah, at, but... at, I, at the end of it, because, you know, yeah. the movie tie-in games, they, they dried up once like yes. the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 hit. Uh, but I remember the WALL-E and Toy Story 3 games on there. That, yes. Those, yep. those were the ones that... And then a lot I of them remember. became like Disney Infinity too. 
right like, yep. uh, th- that Which was everywhere i loved because i i loved disney infinity when it, when it was coming out i uh, had every version of it literally have like probably 50 to 60 of those characters Jeez. <laughs> i never had I, it but my nephews did so i would only it, play it on their wii or whatever it, it, it was fun you know i i it came out first when i was like 13 or 14 so it, it was a uh, it was especially fun then uh but you know interventions also had some of all thrills which was like this the roller mm-hmm. coaster i never did that where you where you used math and stuff to to design a roller coaster and it and physics and that was cool and then also the great piggy bank adventure which yeah, taught me more funny. about personal finance than my school ever did which yes. is is uh both cool for for uh interventions but also an indictment on the american public school system that's true uh because you know they don't ever teach you how, how to do the personal finance thing but uh yeah i i just re- i just remember epcot and then also club cool very fun mm-hmm. uh it's back. very fun yeah exactly i'm i'm excited because i think i'm gonna go to epcot in august and i want to go to club cool and try the new flavors you know yeah i didn't get to do it this time but um i, I passed it i i didn't even know where it was placed anymore but like I came out after they were already closed and we were getting ready to leave for the park. I was like, Oh, that's where the new club cool is. Yeah. I think it's like connected to what used to be mouse gear. No. Okay. Okay. So like the other side of, of yes. uh, where it was. Okay. Kind of like it, I was leaving whatever the store is now creations, something lame, not right. as good as mouse gear. And yeah. you walk <laughs> out of it and I was heading towards, um, uh, guardians. To take a picture of the spaceship and that's when i saw club cool so if i'm right it's somewhere over there yep okay okay uh so favorite how about favorite disneyland park there's favorite only two disneyland? <laughs> yeah um i i think it's probably gonna go i think california adventure for me you know uh it it had for me it has the better restaurants it has the better rides because you know, it's got Avengers Campus. It's got uh, the Guardians uh, uh, in- inspired Tower of Terror, Mission Breakout. God, I, I, I've it slipped my it slipped my brain for a second there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also has like the animation workshop. So like how Hollywood Studios used to have that place where you could go learn to draw Disney characters. Yes, yeah. they still have that at California Adventure, which I I really like that uh, because for like i i used to make like stop motion animations and stuff for fun and so just learning about animation is is really fun for me and uh you know i i i i I think also the pixar pier area is super fun you know they've got the incredicoaster on there which is a good time uh toy story mania is there i yeah i i really like almost everything in California adventure. There's one that I'll get to what, which I'll, I'll talk about later because I have tied it into a, a different, a different question on here, but uh, yeah, there's only one ride I hate in Disney in any Disney park that I've been. To. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now I'm interested. Um, <laughs> I like California adventure a lot. I know a lot of people didn't like it when it first came out, but um I, I really do. I like the way that they fixed up like Buena Vista Street. Um, before it used to have like the Golden Gate Bridge and a whole bunch of random California stuff. Now, now it makes more sense. Yep. Um, very much the Hollywood Studios of of the West Coast. I don't like Pixar Pier. I liked it better as Paradise Pier. That's um, that. That's fair. I, I feel like, and I haven't been there since they changed it to Pixar Pier. But I just feel like we don't need everything to be an IP. You know, uh, I mean, fair. they have Paradise Pier, the hotel. So are they going to name that Pixar Pier, the hotel? Like, it it's is just, still Paradise Pier. Odd. I know is still, it is still called. So that. it's even makes less sense. <laughs> now. <laughs> um, OK, favorite resort. OK, so there's a lot of fantastic resorts all across both Disneyland and Disney World. Uh, and I've got four contenders for the top spot. Uh, Bay Lake Tower. Polynesian, Animal Kingdom Lodge, and Grand Californian. Uh, and of those three, I, I'm going to go with Bay Lake Tower. Out of those, Bay Lake Tower is my favorite of 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 those honor of like the list of like the top tier ones that I've stayed at. You know, uh, the rooms are great in there, and because no matter what, you have a great view. You either can see like 
uh, the the waterfront parade at night, uh, or you can see Magic Kingdom at, at night, and you can see the fireworks from your room, which is awesome. Uh, or if, if if you end up going back before the fireworks, of course, uh, and then you know you can walk to Magic Kingdom, and it's the most convenient place to get to Epcot because you're one stop in the right direction on the monorail to get to uh, you know the Ticket and Transportation Center, so you can go to Epcot easily, which obviously is great for me because I love Epcot and also the dining is really good because it's con connected to the contemporary. So you've got, you know, the classic chef Mickey's. I really like all the counter service options at contemporary. Uh, and I, I really want to try that steakhouse 71 place because it looks fantastic and I love a good steak. So, uh, hopefully I'll get to try that out eventually. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I think the, the only reason why it wins out over the other two is because Animal Kingdom Lodge, the transportation isn't great from there. So that holds it back quite a bit from being everything it could be. And Polynesian, you know, while both Animal Kingdom Lodge and Polynesian have some of my favorite places to eat, uh, they Polynesian is just too spread out for my liking, I think. I really like the more compacted resorts. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I've not stayed at Bay Lake Towers. It, it's it's super nice. That's that's uh, the DVC home resort for my family. So, yes. Uh, yeah. Ours is Boardwalk and Old Key West. Nice. So we usually stay at Saratoga. <laughs> <laughs> I have that right. I don't know why. Then uh, maybe Saratoga is one of our home ones. I don't remember. Um, uh, okay. So we have uh, next question. How many resorts have you stayed at? Yeah, so I had to do I had to do some uh, research into the archives, i.e., the scrapbooks, uh, for to figure this out just to see which ones I've stayed at. And uh, so in Disneyland, I've stayed at all three of them. <laughs> so I've stayed at Disneyland Hotel, Paradise Pier, and Grand Californian. Uh, at Disney World, I think I've stayed at like close to fifty percent of them, uh, of uh, because. Bay Lake Tower stayed at Contemporary when we got snowed in, like Minnesota was completely covered in snow and no planes were taking off from there. So we just got stranded in Florida for another four days. Uh, wow. So we stayed at Contemporary because that was the only place that was open uh, nearby us. Uh, Polynesian, Grand Floridian, so all of the monorail resorts, uh, Wilderness Lodge, Animal Kingdom Lodge, Art of Animation, Boardwalk, Caribbean Beach, Port Orleans Riverside, Old Key West, and Saratoga Springs. I think that covers all of them there. So uh, that that makes three in Disneyland and twelve in in Disney World. So fifteen mm. in total. I think is the is the end result there. Dang. Yeah, a, a lot yeah, of variety. I don't, I don't think I've stayed at fifteen of them. <laughs> um, we I feel like we 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 change it up so regularly, just like where where we end up staying, which I kind of like animation. Because... The three all stars, Polly. I swear we probably stayed at Contemporary when I was little. Um, Oki West, Boardwalk, Caribbean, um, Coronado. Jeez. Saratoga, if I didn't mention that one already. I don't think you have. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. Um, I'd have to see a list in front of me. I think I'm kind yeah, of forgetting that's, a whole that's bunch what I right had now. to do as well. I, I, had, I had to look at a list at the same time, just being like, do I have any memories of staying at this place? Right, uh, right. I I remember my least favorite one of those uh, was actually one that we stayed at quite often, which was Port Orleans Riverside, mm. uh, because it, it. I mean, it, it's fine. Yeah, uh, it's it's just a very spread out resort, and most of the transportation to other places is by boat. And while I'm yes, fine so. with the boats, uh, I also don't like it to be the primary option to to travel other places. Oh, uh, yes, I've stayed at um, Animal Kingdom Lodge. Nice. That that is a good one. Yeah. Yes, I really do enjoy that, especially just being on a lookout, you know, and see the see the animals. Yeah. Is a nice little thing. Um, 
I'm trying to pull up a list of resorts, but it's not really showing any. Oh, here we go. Okay. Coronado Caribbean. Oh, Fort Wilderness. Yes. Oh, you saved Fort Wilderness too. Okay. Yes. We used to a lot as a kid. Um, Boardwalk, Animal Kingdom, Polly, Wilderness Lodge. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's most of them. And like I said, all of the uh, Saratoga, Old All West Stars, World Pop Century. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure I say Pop Century. I know I say Art of Animation and All Stars. So. Yeah, I, I think you've probably stayed at close to 15. Yeah, and it, Paradise Pier. <laughs> yep. yep. I, I have not stayed at any of the other ones over there, I don't think. I think it's been Paradise Pier both times I've went. Yeah, I I think I've been to to Disneyland four, four five. Hmm. <laughs> it's, it, no, it's four times. Uh, Disneyland Hotel was once, Paradise Pier was twice, and Grand Californian was hmm. once. Grand Californian, I, think, yeah. I had breakfast in. Yeah, at the Storytellers Cafe, I think, probably. Yes, yep. That I, I like that place a lot. Place is good. Yep, that's the... It was it was nice. Um, some different characters there in the morning than uh, yep, some of the yep. other ones. I was hoping for Br'er Bear and Br'er Fox and Br'er <laughs> Rabbit because they were on a list... Uh, that was previously, but instead we got like, um, like Pluto, um, and we got the brother bear characters, uh, yeah. And somebody else, I think, but I was like, I can see Pluto anywhere. This is my biggest (laughs) complaint about character breakfasts. Stop putting Mickey and his friends in different costumes for character breakfasts. Use the other thousand characters you have in your <laughs> in your library. Like, how many times do we see like Hercules? We don't. He's there for like when they do like a marathon or if they're doing training at Epcot. Yeah. And I don't know. You could fit him in somewhere, I'm sure. I'm trying to think of where uh would be a good fit for him. Uh the uh... fifth park that I'm gonna make. Well, which we'll oh, have okay. an episode Got about. Got it. Okay. Uh, it would definitely have a great restaurant for Hercules and friends. But um, just like thinking that, like, let's say Tusker House, right? Yep. That has, what, like Donald and Safari gear, Mickey and Safari yep. gear. I don't know. Put Animal Kingdom characters there, you know, like uh, other animals than our main five, because we can literally see them in any other like chef mickey's chef mickey yeah. should be the hub of like where you go see mickey sitting down like for character right references. because it, it's in the that'd name, be the draw you know? <laughs> that's the draw right, yeah. of chef mickey's tusker house you could do like you know lion king characters in there uh but actually that's kind of tough uh hell Timon bring Mowgli in there just a guy in an orange <laughs> loincloth with tarzan <laughs> in a brown loincloth there you go yeah. you're starting to get it a bit. <laughs> there you go tarzan jane uh yes see that would be good yeah. You, you, um yeah they, uh, that, that yeah. would be a good idea it's more variety yeah because sometimes i'm looking at like you know table service places where i'm like oh i want to eat there for like want to try some other place that's what like ohana's great because it has like stitch and lilo but yep. then it also can't help itself and is like and here's mickey minnie and pluto <laughs> i think it's just Mickey. yeah i think it is just but pluto. i could be wrong but i think minnie's there i i swear i have a picture of her at ohana um it may they be. probably Maybe rotate out at times change it up a little all right, uh, enough of me complaining about the state of character breakfast. Uh, favorite restaurant, quick service. Favorite restaurant, okay. quick service. I know you don't favorite eat a lot of quick, quick service, service. places. Okay. You guys are fancy. You guys are always having the reservations. <laughs> now we, we uh, let's see. Um, quick service. Um, I I have one for each park, including the Disneyland parks. So, uh, for Magic Kingdom. It's kind of unpopular, apparently, according to like some Disney food bloggers. 
but uh i love cosmic rays i i love it you know yes. uh, the atmosphere is great i it was even better when they had the toppings bar for like the burgers but obviously covid can't do that uh, and the cheese sauce they used to have the that, cheese sauce right could right pump in that for the fries and, and now you have to it. ask for it yeah exactly like behind it yeah so I, I i like that one that one for quick service uh epcot regal eagle uh in the american adventure pavilion i wish there was more like quick service for the other you know pavilions in there mm -hmm. like uh you know more more comprehensive options you know because like germany yes. they've got pretzel and bratwurst like like mm -hmm. as, yeah as is the bratwurst service. place is that the one that's like next to the um like kind of underneath the right yeah that where the, the entrance to right the, across the from the table service was supposed to be. yeah exactly yeah. yeah and uh so that that's i wish i wish they had more of those but regal eagle is great for barbecue um hollywood studios backlot express they mm -hmm. i i ate there at my on my most recent trip they have a pulled pork burger which was fantastic and they had something called a wookie cookie which is yes. like a giant uh you know like uh the little debbie oatmeal cream pies right mm -hmm. like it, it was a giant one of those and it was great um and then for uh animal kingdom i'm gonna go flame tree barbecue you'll notice a lot of barbecue options on here uh that yes. that should give you a hint of what, of what i really well, like to eat, you know <laughs> you know it's funny <laughs> is uh one of my friends who worked in dino land with me mm -hmm. boom uh she worked at flame tree before she went to dino land so yes uh, it was a very stressful time for her in flame tree i think but she enjoyed yeah, it but she busy, i think yeah. she wanted to transfer out uh for her second half of the program and she worked dino land with me and shout out to yeah. sarah yeah the 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 ribs and onion rings there mm, love those it's it's a great time I, I don't I, I think I've that. eaten that flame tree. I always go to out. Restaurantosaurus. I mean, you you have the nostalgia factor for it too. So I I mean, well, there, I ate a resto that. before I worked in Dino. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but back when here's it, my back when it was the McDonald's, right? <laughs> yes. Here, here's my little hint, okay, of if I'm gonna like a place. Do you have the chicken nuggets and fries? If yes, you're my favorite place in the park, okay? Because that's my favorite Disney food. As bad as it sounds, is there little hey, those, chicken those nuggets? Those are good. Those are they good. are good. So yes, Cosmic Rays is great. Uh, but I always went there for the cheese sauce too to be able to dip my fries. Mm -hmm. And of course, Sunny Eclipse, right? Yeah, Sunny Eclipse yeah. singing. And I love I, the last few times I've been there, I've sat through his show like two times. You know, <laughs> like the loop of songs like once or twice. Um, and my favorite in Epcot used to be what Regal Eagle is, but that's like mostly barbecue stuff now yep and even like the burger is like a on texas toast i don't know yeah it's not as good um for me i liked what it was before i forget what it was actually called but they used to I, have like I, yeah it, crab it was cakes like... they used to have the nuggets right. i think <laughs> yep yep <laughs> they used to have a burger you know like a regular burger uh, i liked electric umbrella too because you know you guys had the nuggets <laughs> <laughs> so, but i remember sitting at electric umbrella during the 2011 uh women's world cup and um usa losing to japan and me kind of like following along on twitter you know because you <laughs> couldn't like stream video back then yep. so you're like constantly refreshing like what's going on here um epcot nowadays is um refreshment port because they have my chicken nuggets over there <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, I, I sense the theme i sense it uh <laughs> <laughs> um backlot express has the chicken nuggets but they made them strips <laughs> yeah so yeah. not as crazy about the strips they taste the same but i'm like i you know i want eight not they're not four. they're not they're not they're also not as crunchy i've no, yeah I've i want that that's i want the other the, my mind to think it's getting more by having eight <laughs> exactly. instead of four like come on and um i like abc commissary as well that that is a good one they they have like a buffalo chicken sandwich there that they have a good, good chicken um grilled chicken sandwich i got that there last time like a chicken club nice um and yeah animal kingdom is resto sometimes pizza fari if i'm in the mood for pizza but yeah i, I usually I'm... go to ride dino walk around <laughs> dino land and then go right into restaurant <laughs> good good a good plan of action uh for 
for Disneyland, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not. The dining options at Disneyland Park seem much more limited and always seem to be almost the exact same wherever you go. But mm-hmm. Hungry Bear, Hungry Bear in like it's it's called Bear Country, I think uh, there. But yes, you know, Critter it, Country, <laughs> Critter Country, right? Uh, but they have like this honey chicken sandwich there that was amazing. Uh, so that 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 was fantastic. And uh, uh, but then in Disney's California Adventure. You've got Flo's V8 Cafe. And the reason I like it is the cheeseburger there. Uh, they have a Thousand Island dressing on it, which is like one of my favorite sauces mm. to put on a burger. It it sounds weird, but don't knock it until you try it. It's it's so good. Do they have do they have V8s there? Uh <laughs> I feel like they should. I I, mean, I can't yeah. remember, but it that seems like an oversight if not. If not, like <laughs> slap their head and been like, you could have had a V8. What yeah, you exactly. Doing? You should. <laughs> um, no, that is interesting. That was my first thought when you had it, and people probably don't even know what V8 is anymore. It's not as like they don't even advertise that as much as they used to. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I'm just looking up quick service real quick. I'm trying to find something over in Disneyland because I'm not sure what we ate there. Like, I'm trying to find a name of a place. Yeah, that, that, that I that's the at. thing that I was like com- when I was compiling the, the this list of restaurants, I was like, not many Disneyland ones stand out to me because I think there's... we had a Galactic Grill in Tomorrowland. Oh, right. I I don't think I've I've been there before. Yeah, hmm. I it, it's it's really strange. Like uh, because for, for Disney World, it, it could also just be because I've been there more often yes like yeah. the restaurants are very clear but <laughs> when you think about disneyland it's a little bit less just because i felt like most of the places were pretty standard like you know we have cheeseburger and chicken nuggets and sometimes if if we're feeling a little crazy uh you you can get you can get onion rings instead of fries or waffle oh so instead you're of fries so you're saying if they have my chicken nuggets, I'm good, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, like most place of the places, I'm probably good. <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> They're all my favorite. Uh, no, I think I did eat at Galactic Grill. I, I don't know. I sat there, and I <laughs> sat there because it was right after I got engaged. We were, like, calling our families while we were. Oh, you mm-hmm. know what? We didn't eat there. You know what we did? We ate. <laughs> I ate lunch that day that I got engaged at... Um, ESPN, I guess. Oh, okay. ESPN okay. there. I may. I don't think so anymore, but they might have. I think they did. The time. Yeah, I think they did uh, in 2016. Um, okay. And we ate lunch with one of her family members who live in San Diego, and we told them in person that we were engaged. And then, um, for dinner, my grandmother took us to Rainforest Cafe. So oh, okay. Okay. I did not eat in the park that day, I guess. So I'm not sure where I, what I was doing. Um, okay. Table service. I know you probably have a bunch, a bunch of these. Oh yeah. I I've got, I've got a few of them. Uh, so there, there's a lot of them in, especially in Disney world. When I was thinking about it, uh, I love Ohana's dinner and breakfast, uh, their dinner, especially they've got the pot and some pot stickers, some pork pot stickers that I love. They've got chicken wings, They've got, and and all of the sauces that they use for it too. I I love that that sort of flavoring, like the Polynesian flavor. Fantastic. Um, you know, uh, Chef Mickey's can get an honorable mention, even though I don't think the food is as good as other places. The nostalgia alone is enough to, and also the dessert bar, like the dessert bar there is great. Uh, Boma is fantastic at Anakin Lodge. Great variety of food. Tusker House. Uh, gets an honorable mention as well because of the jungle juice, which is just uh, pineapple, orange, gua- or passion fruit, orange, guava juice. But man, I love I love that that mm-hmm. so much. I I I feel like I drink like ten cups every time I go there. Uh, I love this the atmosphere of the sci fi dine in in Hollywood Studios. Uh, you know, Epcot has some of my favorite places with Chefs de France, Via Napoli, Teppanito, uh, Rose and Crown. Uh, those are some of my favorite places to eat. And I also tried the boathouse at Disney Springs, which is really good. Yes. And then from Disney, from 
like the Disneyland resort area, Lamplight Lounge is the only sit down restaurant that I can really think of that gets a spot on the list. But the decor, it's all Pixar related and the food is really good as well. Um, but my favorite one, which I haven't mentioned yet, which just barely beats out Ohana. And honestly, you could probably switch them around depending on how I'm feeling that day. Uh, Jungle Cruise Skipper Canteen. It is mm. my favorite place. I, I, I'll get to this later, but Jungle Cruise is one of my favorite rides. And so just being in that kind of the lore of, of Jungle Cruise and like, you know, uh, the food there is pretty good as well. They have a, a great steak with some great flavor into it and great side dishes. Uh, and also they, they've got uh, this dessert called Kungaloosh, which is really good as well. It's like a chocolate cake. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how else to describe it, but it's a really good chocolate cake. Uh, but Honestly, yeah, all of those restaurants, if you, if you told me I was eating at any one of those, I wouldn't be mad about any of them. Uh, I, I really, and I probably could have mentioned even more because there's just so many, mm -hmm. so many good table service restaurants. Jeez, my favorite table service. That's a tough one. I don't know. We usually don't eat a lot of table service. I really like Oga's, even mm -hmm. though doesn't really have any food. I mean, it has some snacks and stuff. The breakfast had a really good, I'm not sure if they still do, a really good cinnamon roll that was like a Mustafar Oh, yeah. They, cinnamon I, I roll. remember having that at the Disneyland Galaxy's Edge. Yes. Know. Yeah. And then, you know, I got to get the Java Juice. Last time I got like three drinks. Uh, I got Java <laughs> Juice, Carbon Freeze, and uh, something else. But uh, the hyperdrive something, I don't know. Uh, yeah. The best one is still the Java Juice. So for me, anyway. Um, so I guess I'll say that's one of my favorite. Because uh, that's like the only table service that I'm like, every time I go down there, I'm like, we got to hit Oga's. Because there's no other way to get in there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Like no other way to get the juice and stuff. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay. Favorite parks snack. Mine. Ooh. I have to get the Mickey pretzel. And I usually have to get a uh, cookie uh, ice cream sandwich. Yep. Makes sense. So uh, what are your favorite park snacks? Okay. So there's a few that, that I always get. Uh, one, churro with chocolate sauce. Uh, they usually have it on one of those carts around like uh, the founder's statue at Disney World. Always got to get one of those, you know, and you got to get the churro. Um and then I really love the fudge that Disney makes. I, I don't know what makes it so much better than everywhere else I've had it, but it's it's fantastic every time. Uh, and then I I also, uh, are, are there any, I, I mean, I do like sometimes to get, uh, you know, the, the corn dog nuggets at Casey's Corner. Those are pretty good. And I used to have a favorite snack there, which was like, if, if this was made like five years ago, I, I would have said without hesitation, the buffalo chicken and waffles at Trilobites in a Animal Kingdom, but it's gone. They got rid of it, and now it's buffalo chicken like kettle chips, and it's not the same. It's not. It's not as good. It makes me sad that that uh, that that's what what's replaced it. But my favorite uh, is not one that that like you you know you you could get it most any place in Disney, and. It's it's uh the Mickey chocolate company whatever whatever it's called uh the malted milk chocolate balls oh my gosh those things are I don't know I, I don't know what what they're made with I mean I know they're chocolate and malted milk but they're just fantastic I I think I got four bags the last trip I was on uh which is an expensive habit but it's they're still so good. Yeah, uh, I still have a little bit of our bag here of them. Let me tell you the thing that got me addicted. I don't know what they put in it. It's some sort of Disney pixie dust in there, I yep. guess, to get me addicted. But it's these Minnie Mouse graham cookies. <laughs> There's like three bags while I was down there. Been really seriously debating ordering them to, come <laughs> to get to my house. But it's like double the price. And... Uh, yeah, so I've been kind of on a Graham Cookies uh, kick lately, but um, 
that one's really good. They're like in the shape of just Disney characters, you know. Are they like animal crackers kind of or uh more like Teddy Grahams, like honey Teddy Grahams. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, now okay, I see I see but better. I see why you like them. Okay. But better. Yep. Okay. <laughs> They're like the best. I even got like these little, uh, they're not Teddy Graham ones, but I got, I went to Ollie's, which is a bargain outlet and they have these. <laughs> so that's where I got my comics yesterday, but they also have these like big bags of Graham cookies in bare shape, but they're not Teddy Grahams. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have them for 99 cents a bag. So I picked up a couple <laughs> of those and I was like, okay. Cause I did try some at the local grocery store, but they were like organic and they were nah. not as good. I'll tell you that much. Uh, now these were a little bit closer to the Disney ones. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, watch, uh, you know, I ate a few of those yesterday while reading some comics and, and, uh, watching some TV. So back on the kick, but next time I go down there, you know, I'm going to get the graham cookies. Yeah. Yep. Do That's going to be my malt balls. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Okay, uh, Disney World or Disneyland? Which one? I know the question just says Disney World, <laughs> Disneyland, but I guess which one is your favorite, and uh, why? I mean, it's tough because they're both fantastic and both have strengths. Like, they they both have great Disney experiences, and some of them have exclusive things. Like, you know, you only get World Showcase at Disney World. You only get Avengers Campus at Disneyland, uh, and you know. One thing that's really nice about Disneyland is you can walk everywhere, which means like, you know, if if halfway through the day at the park, like if you got up to rope drop one of the parks, uh, you can like easily go back to your hotel and take like a one hour rest. Right. Like it's really easy to do that. If you wanted to do that at Disney World, it depends on where you're staying. But if you're like an animal kingdom and you're staying at uh, Polynesian, you, you can't do that because pretty much once you go back to Polynesian, you're, you're going to, you're, you're going to spend like, you know, 20 minutes waiting for the bus, 25 minutes riding back up there. And then you're going to get there. And then you're going to be like, huh, do I really want to go spend the other 45 minutes to go back now? And so that, that's one of the downsides of that. But, you know, uh, I, I do like Walt Disney World's variety of public transport because I'm a big tr- pu- uh, public transportation fan. I love the monorail. Uh, I love I love the buses as slow as they can be. Sometimes the boats. I I'm usually scared of heights. The Skyliner was a little creepy for me, but it was it was still fast and efficient. Uh, but I I, I really li- like all that. But at the end of the day, uh, I'm I'm gonna say Walt Disney World wins out over Disneyland, and that's because of a few things. Because having been to both within a year of each other, I'm 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 gonna say Walt Disney World has the better food right away. Uh, food is a big part of the Disney experience for me, and I Disney World beats Disneyland easy with with the food options. Uh, and Walt and you know they they also have more things to do, and they've got World Showcase in Epcot. Uh, that <laughs> that that kind of drives it at home as well, you know. Uh, if, 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 uh, if Disneyland gets a third gate, that's like Epcot, uh, you know how it was supposed to be Westcott or whatever that, that may had planned, uh, that, that, then maybe, then maybe it's a bit closer, but you know, I, Disneyland's food options are a bit too generic theme park for me. You know, I really like the signature options as well. Yes. Um, okay. Favorite Disney movie. Favorite Disney movie? Uh, ooh, I know, they, these are all tough questions. I really liked Encanto recently. Love mm-hmm. the soundtrack from that. It's fantastic. Uh, listened to that soundtrack so many times. Uh, but I'm not going to let recency bias get too much in the way. If we're talking just Disney, it's between Lilo and Stitch or Lion King. But I'm going to choose Lion King over those two because I love the soundtrack from it. Uh was probably one of the first Disney movies I watched, honestly. And uh, I just really, really like that one. Uh, and but if we if we bring in other properties like uh, Pixar, right? If yeah. we bring in that, I love Pixar movies like uh, Toy Story 3, Soul, Inside Out, Finding Nemo, Wally, Incredibles. Th- those are like my favorite Pixar movies. And if we're if we're bringing the in Pixar to go along with this, uh, Toy Story 3 wins. It, it is the movie that I most clearly remember, like the Disney movie I most clearly remember going to theaters to see 
because you know i i didn't have to wait as long for it as other people did <laughs> yeah. right like I, I was like i saw toy story toy story 3 like seven years ago and people were like it's been 20 years and i'm like huh that's that's a bit strange for me but uh i i, I love toy story 3 it, it was great it, it's it's honestly just one of my favorite animated movies of all time as well yeah toy story 3 is it's pretty great i'm really excited for Lightyear. By the way, every time yeah, it, uh, it I saw another good. trailer for it again in front of the Batman, and I was like, "This just well, one the you know playing like Bowie in front of it, you know, during the trailer <laughs> is, is pretty pretty interesting." Good, but good it gets book. me gets me uh, yeah pretty amped up here, and I think Chris Evans is you know great. I, I saw a lot of people complaining that's not Tim Allen, but Tim Allen is the toy Buzz Lightyear. This is exactly the movie that his toy is based off of in Andy's universe. So this is. You know, it's it, of course it'd be different. All right, favorite character. Now this could be open to anything you kind of want it to be. If you're going to have a favorite meet and greet, or if you're looking at just favorite Disney character in the in Disney or Pixar. Okay. Whew. Uh, they've produced a lot of memorable characters. They don't use all of them all the time in the parks, which is yes. annoying. Uh, <laughs> but. It, it, it's really tough to choose a favorite, but if like, so I'm, I'm going to separate this into a few sections, but if we're talking classic Disney characters, right? Like, uh, the, like some of the original ones from the original cartoons, my favorite one is chip. I, I love, I love chip. Uh, Dale's cool too, but come on. Chip, That's what I was going to ask chip, if it was chip, chip and Dale, or if it was chip from Mrs. Potts, <laughs> but so, no, 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 no. Yes, chip, chip, from chip, chip and Dale. Dale. Yep. Yes. Uh, I'm very excited for the rescue, uh, the yes, Chippendale John rescue Mulaney Rangers movie. And, um, yep. and Andy Samberg, Samberg. Yeah. two of my favorite uh, comedic actors, co comedians slash comedic actors, I guess. Uh, and it's directed by Akiva Schaefer, which is going to be great. Yeah, so it's a Lonely uh, so, Island movie, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that, that's, that's what I'm getting at. Uh, so but what I'm, I like I'm about it too is that it's very meta you know we're like they've, yep, they, yep. they've been these stars and you know dale's getting the 3d surgery to become like a cgi <laughs> character like it looks really really fun it, it looks fantastic i can't wait for it uh i i also really like donald uh yes he, he he's he's great i i actually had i remember on my ipod touch that i got in 2011 I, I spent like ten dollars on iTunes downloading Donald Duck cartoons because <laughs> uh, Early to Bed was one of my favorite ones. Where you know he has the alarm clock and yes, uh, the yeah. fold out bed. That uh, but so th those are some of my favorite ones. If if we're bringing in all the characters, uh, Wally also makes it up there. You know he he's a character that communicates so much emotion without words or with one word, uh, actually. So it, it's. It, I I really like him, but favorite meet and greet then. Um, I re I really did like at the at the Star Wars launch bay going into those yeah. kind kinds of experiences that that was always cool. But if 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 it's open to any meet and greet, Ant Man. <laughs> Ant -Man oh yes, at yeah. Avengers Campus. Uh, you, you know if if you're saying meet and greet. If I get to see Ant Man, even if it's not Paul Rudd's Ant Man, just Ant Man, I love Ant Man. If you, if you, if anyone's listened to any of the Marvel, yes, for people episodes, that don't know, Jack is Ant -Man, a huge Ant Man, Ant -Man is my favorite Doctor superhero. Strange uh, yep. fan. Yes, so that 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 would be the, the best meeting great for me. Although although I guess like uh you know see seeing Mickey at like Town Hall mm -hmm. in, on, on Main Street is good as well, but. I feel like you can see him pretty much everywhere. So it, it, yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't make it like as exciting. Well, it was fun when he talked. Right. Exactly. That's the other thing. I, I went there and I was like, Oh yeah, I remember him. He talks. And then that I was got the there, real Mickey. Like, yeah. And yeah. And, I, and then I was like, Who, who's this guy? <laughs> what what they yeah. do with your voice, bro. <laughs> Lost his voice is what yeah. a cast member would say. Um, you no, know, Mickey talking was fun because you know I'm used to Mickey talking. He was my boss for a couple years while I was yep. down there. Um, <laughs> should have heard the mouth on him backstage. Um, but <laughs> uh, Mickey is my favorite Disney character. He is the mouse that started it all. But I have a huge affinity for his stepbrother Oswald. 
Yeah. The Lucky I, Rabbit. He is I was going to mention him as well. That is my favorite meet and greet um, that I've ever did in, in California. It's why I wanted to go to California, right? <laughs> um, to propose there is I wanted to take a different trip, one. But I also wanted to you go back to Disneyland. But it was right when Oswald was starting to meet, meet and greet out there. And we were not going to get him in Florida for whatever stupid reason. And I was like, let's let's go and it it meant a lot to actually be able to meet him finally so yeah i i remember because from the epic mickey games you know uh i i played those a lot and that's how he really came back to um kind of uh relevance exactly i mean i think disney bought the rights to use him again because they sold them off originally or Walt did. Uh, yes, to... uh, they did not sell them off. What happened? They were stolen. Universal stole right. the rights. Oh, so right. Yep. yep. Universal in the <laughs> no, contract. Right. Uh, I did a whole episode on this, by the way. Um, if anybody wants to go back and listen, it is. <laughs> Let me see if I can locate it. It was before my wedding. It was uh, a side episode that I was going to do a lot more of these, but let me just tell you the. The research it took to do this thing. So it was on uh, January 30th of 2018 called Disneypedia, the history of Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. 28 minutes long. Little audio essay. But yes, he, um, Walt made him and Walt, uh, Universal, the way that the contract was, owned the rights to the character. And when Walt was trying to bargain for kind of like more money for his animators and stuff like that, uh, and to renew their deal through Universal. Uh, Universal just kind of signed all of his animators away and kicked Watt out, pretty much. That's right. Um, That's right. So the way that it came about where they got it, uh, ABC mm-hmm. lost the rights to Sunday Night Football. And Al Michaels, who does Sunday Night Football now for NBC, um, wanted to go to NBC to do more Sunday Night Football and uh, the way that this worked is Universal wanted him as well. Universal owns NBC. And Disney, Bob Iger, um, says, why don't we trade you Mike, Michael, uh, trade you um, Al Michaels and you give us the rights to Oswald back to bring him home. <laughs> and right. it I worked. And it was fantastic. It was one of Iger's like, first acquisitions. And it was great because it really brought home this, you know, they weren't doing anything with Oswald right? Right over there. And I uh, brought home the original, I think like 28 shorts that, uh, that they made with Oswald. So I own the, I own the DVDs of Oswald, the lucky rabbit. So I was very happy to see him and get a horse too. in uh, during first. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I want them to do more. There was rumors that they were putting together a Disney plus show for him. And I guess that just fell through. They should. It kills me. Ever- just yeah, add him into him the in... Fab Five. Like, what is the big? Or deal? at least just put him in the in like the new Mickey Mouse cartoons. You know? Yes, like, exactly. Just add him in as a, he's made an appearance in there as well. But they're always non-speaking. Okay. Uh, favorite Disney Plus show. Uh, I I think you know. Uh, it's it's going to be a Marvel show, and it's between mm-hmm. Hawkeye and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, but between those two, Falcon and the Winter Soldier wins. Uh, it was my favorite Disney Plus show in general uh, because, you know, I, I really like Sam Wilson. I liked him as the Falcon. So getting to see him as Captain America was awesome. And also just the speech that he gives at the end of, of that as well, of, of the end of yeah. the at least first season. I don't know if there's going to be a second one, but if there is. Uh, but it's it's just perfect and it's a great message that resonates outside of the world that's that, that like exists in that show you know it it's a message that really rings home uh today and you know i'm a political mm-hmm. science major and right. so that really that really resonates uh and i also just i liked the action sequences i wish they had developed the plot line with the villains a little bit more a, like because i think it was supposed to be a whole thing with like a pandemic a but yes, yeah that's, but that's I, I, I also understand why uh if that is the case why that wasn't pursued you know <laughs> yeah yeah i think th- that's the rumor i don't know how true it is but that's kind of been what's been floated around 
my favorite Disney Plus show, Mandalorian. So, um, I uh, I really think that they have to get more <laughs> more more Disney Plus content out there based on the characters they already have, which they are doing. I mean, uh, they're developing them. We're supposed to get a Zootopia thing, right? And we're supposed to get um, Baymax, some stuff like that. But, like, come on. We, we, we need some more. Yep. We need some more Disney stuff or behind-the-scenes type stuff, like where this podcast gets its name, you know? We need more stuff like that. All right, favorite brand, Marvel, Pixar, or Star Wars? Lucasfilm. I guess we'll, we'll say Lucasfilm because that has um, uh, Indy in there as well. Like the best acquisition oh. that Iger made pretty much. Oh. Add, adding in Indiana Jones makes that even tougher because originally <laughs> like I, I love Star Wars, but between I like, wanted Pixar to make it harder Marvels, for you. So I said, yes, Lucasfilm. Uh, yeah, uh, it, because Indiana Jones is literally my favorite movie trilogy of all time. The original three. So that makes it really tough now. Oh. And I love Pixar. I love like almost every Pixar movie. And I, I I love pretty much every Marvel movie. Best acquisition? I I think the best acquisition is going to be Marvel though. Like if 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 we're talking business sense for for sure that's the best one cuz I think it's brought in the most revenue and has brought in one of the most recognizable pop culture franchises. Uh, and it was, it, it's a pretty good deal to get that. And they got it pretty early on, right? Like, uh, the, the Marvel, the Marvel acquisition was pretty early on in the MCU, right? Uh, uh it was 2009. Yeah. So that it, if you're, if you're thinking about it like that, when there had been two movies released in the MCU, right? You, December you had, 31st, 2009. Yes. We had yeah. only had incredible so had, Hulk and Iron Man. Yeah. So acquiring it at that point is huge right like that that's that that's that's a massive win but you know pixar is also a great one and then lucasfilm is fantastic too but if, if we're talking you know business sense i i think i think i'd, I'd go with i i think i'd probably go with marvel although pixar is probably a, pixar and lucasfilm are close behind that what's your favorite out of those my favorite like if you were uh, gonna sit down and you're <laughs> like, I'm gonna go to Disney Plus and I'm gonna pull up one of these um, brands here on the header. Which one are you picking? Then it would probably be Marvel. Like Marvel's probably my go-to, uh, and then I'd probably go. I'd pro. I'd probably go Marvel and then Pixar and then Star Star Wars slash Lucasfilm. Mm -hmm. uh, I do like Star Wars, but I'm not as invested as it as the other as in the other ones. I think. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you were CEO for the day, you take over from Bob Chappick. What changes would you make to the company? This could be anything. Could be something small, some mandate you're going to pass down here. <laughs> and this thing, and this thing, by the way, you're CEO for a day, but it continues. Like whatever you put in motion continues. He can't access okay, it when he comes okay, back as okay. he likes to do. He can't do that. <laughs> uh well, first one, just just for the people, uh, we're we're getting we're bringing back the magical express and fast passes. Uh, that that's 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 one thing. Genie that, Plus that, is gone in this. Yep, yep, yep. Fat, fast passes reign supreme, uh, and uh, Disney's magical cool express returns. But if I I let, let I separated this out into one change I would make for each for part. each division. For each oh, park. for each park. Okay, okay. And each movie. I'm I'm going all out for this. Okay. Uh, this is they, interesting. Given, this is good. They've given good. me the reins. I have a yes. full plan ready. Okay. So, first of all, great movie ride is coming back to Hollywood Studios. I don't care where it goes. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's going to be updated. Disney has so many more movie properties now. Uh, bring it back. It used to be my favorite ride in Disney World it, before it, before it got axed. Uh, so we're we're bringing it back. Uh, rebuild it somewhere, you know, bring it, put it in Echo Lake, put it on Sunset Boulevard somewhere. Uh, I, because Mickey and Minnie's is, is great as well, but it, it's coming back. <laughs> and then don't get, don't have the sizzle reel at the end of it. Have the actual finale, which was supposed to be animatronics of all of the like actors who played the, the characters in those movies taking a bow at the end. Give us that. Give us the, give us, that. yeah. You barely get Hall of Presidents, John. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. Uh, 
Okay, but that that's that's the ambitious one. Uh, Epcot is next, and right away where the outpost is, give us the Brazil Pavilion. It's been planned since 1984. Supposedly was supposed to release and uh, to come out in 1984, but it never did. South America is the only continent in World Showcase that isn't represented, besides, uh, you know, uh, Australia, I guess. But mm -hmm. you know, South America deserves representation in World Showcase. You know, uh, it's very Euro Eurocentric as it stands. Give us South something in South America, specifically Brazil. I th I think it would be great. Uh, and we, there's space there for it. So, and there's rumors that that was going to. We talked about it on the show before that there was going to be an announcement of that before it fell through at the last D23. Not the last D23, the last one before the pandemic, pretty much. Right. It. I. I, I want it to happen. Uh, it and probably would have got axed at the at this point. Right. Anyway, with yeah. the pandemic. But. And then uh, in the Japan Pavilion. Give us the Mount Fuji coaster that was supposed to go in there with the world. And throw some Pokemon thing. in there. Put Charizard in there. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Uh, so that that's that that's something. Give Epcot another thrill ride, right? Like Epcot has some. Give give us another one. Doesn't actually uh, have any thrill rides. Well, it's got test track, which is kind I of I don't count that as a test track. Mission I mean, space. You, go, you can go faster than that on I4. You're not you're not doing it. <laughs> fair, fair enough uh um and that, no but yeah mission space probably is the closest yes mission space is close and then the the cosmic rewind is gonna is when that opens will be close uh but yeah I, I i would love to have that uh animal kingdom i've alluded to this already there is one change that needs to be made in animal kingdom bring back the buffalo chicken and waffles okay it's gotta okay. happen that's it that's all I want for Animal Kingdom. I was not going to take any slander on Dino Land. No, I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't, gonna... I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to because because Magic Kingdom is up next, and here's what we're going to do. I we're, we're bringing the Indiana Jones ride to Magic Kingdom. Adventureland. It, yes, Adventureland. You know, there's space there. You can you can do what Disneyland does. They have the queue go under the railway tracks mm -hmm. and have the ride building outside of that. You have the space to do it. Please give us more than the stunt the stunt show the stunt show is great but give us the actual ride um and then you know uh after 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 i've restored uh all all of disney world to to its full glory you know i i've uh i've done that Let, let's head over to disneyland because here, here's what's happening you're fast tracking at california adventure the avengers ride that was supposed that supposedly was supposed to open in 2023 because web slingers is pretty fun but it's it's a long line all the time and you have to do the virtual queue and so so give us give us that that other ride make avengers campus everything it's supposed to be you know if you have the whole reason why it's in california adventure and not in disney world is so you can use the avengers characters so use them to the full extent is right is my logic there right uh and then disneyland park honestly it needs a lot of love uh if if this was if this was recorded earlier, I'd say update Toontown. That's already happening, so mm -hmm. we're 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 good on that. Yeah, we're getting runaway uh, rail there too, right? Yeah, and boy, was an update needed to Toontown. Oh my god, it, some refreshes it was, it was, for Roger. Yeah, and it it was looking run down. Uh, it it was like it was it was just an abandoned Toontown. It it, it was kind of sad. Uh, the the wait time for Roger was literally zero. There were zero people in line. Uh, what we. Yeah, I like we we just went up to it. it. It was like to be fair, it was seven p.m., but there was still two hours left. And that in sounds like heaven, right? I love like Roger. so, so I just went up to it, and <laughs> that was it. Um, and then I, if if it wasn't going to shut down Tomorrowland for literally years, I would say bring back the People Mover. But Rocket Rods destroyed that from ever happening, so that's that's unfortunate. Uh, instead, what I'm going to say is. Give the Fantasyland Dark Rides that haven't gotten it the updates they need. Mr. Toad and Pinocchio, they don't have any digital updates. Alice added in a bunch of digital updates, which makes it look really good. Uh, and Snow White got that. Peter Pan got it. Add hey, in, I'm just add happy Mr. Toad still exists. Yeah, I mean, that, that's <laughs> true. But, you know, it, it could use some updating, right? Like, it, it's still good and all, but it, it really could use that update. Uh, and finally, in terms of movie or TV show projects... Um, personally, I wouldn't touch Marvel because I trust Kevin Feige with it. I'm not, I'm not messing with whatever he's got going on there. Uh, what I, what I say is a sequel to inside out, 
that's what I want to see. I, I really, I really. What's it called? That. Outside in. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought that far into it, I <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel like I feel like it's such a great franchise with some great characters in it, and I, it deserves it deserves more. You know, I feel like you can take that in so many different directions too. There's a lot of things to explore, and I, I, I really liked using you know these kind of fun characters to kind of express all of these emotions and uh and it 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 it's really a nice like reflective piece and also like every good pixar movie it made me cry several times uh so that <laughs> yes that's, that that's the metric for, for i will pixar say that's movies. why i don't rewatch a lot of pixar films i'm like do i want to <laughs> cry right now it, sometimes no. <laughs> it can be like a happy one you know like there, there's yeah, yeah. there's some happy some happy ones in there still but... do i want to exert that much emotion right, <laughs> right. now? no i don't right. So yeah, that that's that's the plan. It's a, it's a lot, uh, but if if uh, Chapek can't change any of it when it comes back, ooh, <laughs> we're, we're making a lot. We're making as many changes as possible. I would install a law that said you can't cut the project's funding after it's already been established. <laughs> that would be because nice. he loves to do it. All yeah. of the stuff in Star Cruiser is stuff that was supposed to be in Galaxy's Edge. They were supposed to have mm -hmm. a, a show that is like the finale of Star Cruiser. They were supposed to have a sit-down restaurant that is in Star Cruiser. They were supposed to have in that sit-down restaurant like a show with a singer dressed as a Twi'lek, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Which is in Star <laughs> Like, it's really, uh, <laughs> you know, and seeing like the creatures, the aliens, um, like where there's people dressed as Rodians and stuff, which were supposed to be all walking around Galaxy's Edge. And, yep. you know, all of that got cut. And um, there you go. So, yeah, something that I am, uh, look, uh, I wish I could take over. I'll just say that. <laughs> yeah. It'd be, you see Oswald the Rabbit everywhere. He'd have a movie. He'd have a show. <laughs> he'd have Disney Plus stuff. He'd be. Uh, bring Oswald's house to Toontown. That, that's you what you need to do. That That's what you got to do. You got to bring Oswald's house to Toontown. He deserves to live there. He does. Yeah. He, he didn't like, have a home he for so now? long. He's still home. Yes. Yeah. He yeah. Has exactly. No home. Like, come on. You, you've, you've given Chip and Dale got a house before, before Oswald and Chip and Dale can live in trees. Like they, exactly. So like, come on, get, give them some respect. They lived in Mickey's Christmas tree at one point. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. And I think I would, after I fix all this stuff up, I would make a fifth gate and that is going to be one of the, topics that we're going to have i think i done that before with my sister but i don't remember <laughs> so we'll do it again uh why not but uh yeah so we, i realized we missed one by the way favorite attraction at each park yeah oh yeah we did skip that yeah favorite attraction because at each park. because then i can then i can talk about my least favorite one too uh as there you go as, as there the only one uh but favorite attraction at each park uh I mean, Hollywood Studios. It would have been a great movie ride, if that if that wasn't gone. Uh, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll I'll go I'll go through them them in the order I wrote them down. Epcot is easiest for me right now. It's Spaceship Earth. I I love Spaceship Earth. I love the history of communication. I coach debate, <laughs> so the history of communication is a fascinating topic, and uh, the narration's great. Animatronics are pretty good. Uh, I do hope it gets an update eventually, but. Still, I, I I really like it. Animal Kingdom is pretty easy. I I think Expedition Everest is my favorite roller coaster I've been on. I really like it. The storytelling's great. I just realized something else I would change uh, for Animal Kingdom. Clean up the hair ties at the top of the lift hill, please, please. There's like literally thousands of them. It's so distracting. Yeah. You get up there and it's supposed to be like this desolate mountain peak that's been destroyed. And you just see hair ties everywhere. And it's like it's the Yetis. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. He does have <laughs> yeah, yeah. hair. That's right. He no, does. Yeah. He's trying to keep it clean and <laughs> yeah. It got a little trying loose. to style it a little bit. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. that's why he's attacking all of the people coming up the mountain. He just wants yes. hair ties. That, that's yes. it. Give me your hair ties. <laughs> uh and then Magic Kingdom. I, I alluded to this with favorite restaurant. Jungle Cruise is my mm -hmm. favorite ride at Magic Kingdom because I love puns and it's filled with them. I it is. I I don't know why I like puns so much, but I do, and that's why it's my favorite. There, uh, I crack up on that ride more than anyone else, despite hearing those jokes for the past twenty one years. They still are funny. 
I can't explain why. Uh, but did you see yeah, the movie uh, yet? Did you see the movie? I yet? haven't. No, I haven't. It I is good. I I enjoyed it. I it was my surprise of last year. Like it really. Okay. I didn't think I'd like it as much as I did. Yeah. See, I'm on spring break now, so I have. And time they fit to the puns those. in there. They fit the oh, puns okay. in there. That well. that's the so. main thing. That that's the thing that's necessary to make a Jungle Cruise movie. Yes. So. Exactly. Uh, and then Hollywood Studios, like I said, would have been great movie ride and would have been my favorite in Disney World in general. But now that that's gone, uh, I, it, I, I would say Star Tours is my favorite. I once wrote it seven times in a row. And also for the first time it. in my most recent trip, I finally got to be the Rebel Spy. Yes. Finally. It took it, it's probably been 50 to 60 times going through it. And I finally got it. When I so, got that on my program, I bought the shirt and I got a little celebrating pin that says uh -huh. I'm the rebel spy. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done that. I should have. And when I met the characters, it was like the day I met the characters at um, Hollywood in like the um, by Tower of Terror mm -hmm. where they were doing the phantasmic stuff. Right. And I had like Snow White ask me what that meant and everything. And I was like having to improvise like on the spot. <laughs> like, uh, but yeah. Yeah, and then oh, uh, for the Disneyland parks, uh, for Di for California Adventure, I'm going Guardians Mission Breakout. Uh, mm. Hot take: I think it's better than the Hollywood Tower Hotel. I I I like it a lot more. I per personal preference, but uh, yeah, I, I really like that Disneyland uh, Indiana Jones Adventure. And actually, my favorite ride in all of the Disney parks is the Indiana Jones Adventure. That that's that is my favorite one. I love that ride. It, the best, the best Disney World rides make you feel like you are in the movie that it's supposed to be, right? Like that. Those are the best ones. They they make you feel like you're part of an adventure. And that and Indiana Jones accomplishes that perfectly. You feel like you feel like this sense of adventure. Like you feel like you're going up. It's supposed to be like a tour a tourist thing where you get like eternal life or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it just all goes wrong. And it feels like an Indiana Jones movie. It feels like it. Yeah, uh, it's a great ride. It, and it has the boulder scene, you know, it, it feel it, it, it combines like some of the best elements from the Indiana Jones movies and puts it into a ride. And also the queue is fantastic too. That adds to the story. Like you can, you can tell like they tried to make it into a tourist type thing with, uh, you know, like trying to set up all the traps to make sure they don't fall on people and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it fe it feels like it, it feels like a comprehensive experience through and through. Uh, I I was tempted to say Rise of the Resistance as well for it. If like uh, the the only thing is while it's great and re and looks smooth when it works a hundred percent, when it doesn't work a hundred percent, it it takes you out of it quickly. I feel like Indiana Jones doesn't break that often, and that and that helps it a lot in my eyes. But. Uh, yeah, that that's that's my favorite ride, and that's why I want it in Disney World so badly. I don't care really where it goes, honestly. Like honestly, put it in Animal Kingdom if that's what it takes to get it into the park. I I don't really care as long you as you can't it's you can't just because it is the same exact layout as Dinosaur. Oh right, yeah, that, like I, it's the same. It's the same thing. Like the, yeah. the same stops, the same turns. It is. It's, yeah, um, I'll tell you what they messed up in in, in Dinosaur. Mm -hmm. I was on it the last few times I've been on it. They changed before, like when you're, well, one, they got rid of the whoops. Do you know what I'm saying? Like when yep, yep. you get stuck, and he's like, whoops, and you get out of the little stuck, and then you kind of go around. And when you get to the part where you're supposed to go right, left, right, left, mm -hmm. they change, they reverse the words to left, right, left, right, but they took the same sound clip. So it sounds very bizarre <laughs> because it's emphasizing the wrong, like it sounds totally wrong um oh no and i think they did that because they probably just realized that when he was saying right left like we were going the opposite ways so i think they flipped it because of that but it doesn't work it doesn't work they should have just brought the guy in to re-record it but yeah um yeah that's money i guess oh yeah uh i i just realized i i didn't say the least favorite ride uh yes the only uh, ride this, that is I... this the one that you were gonna mention at animal kingdom uh or... just in general it, it's just in general but uh the only ride that I truly hate at, at any Disney park is the swinging Mickey's Ferris wheel at California adventure. 
It's your that, least favorite? That yeah, I hate I hate it. I because when I was 10, my my family convinced me to go on it and I was terrified the whole time because I already don't like heights. And you add in this swinging thing and every time I've been on I was it like, once. "Oh my." Uh, yeah. And I was like, "Oh my god, I'm going to fall off into into like this little river like a uh, what, whatever the body of water in the center of Paradise Pier, Pixar Pier is." I was terrified the entire time of that. And I I remember this and my family t- tell me about this every time. We get around after going through once and I'm like, "Oh my god, it's over." And I'm I have like tears streaming down my face and everything. <laughs> and the ride operator says one more time and then I go through and just scream. <laughs> and um yeah, that 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 ride is is just no, I I I don't I don't I don't like that at all. <laughs> I already didn't like Ferris wheels. And then you add in the swinging aspect. Mm-hmm. No, it's a big no for me. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, that about wraps up the first episode here. I don't know when it'll be posted, um, but we're going to try to record a few of these before putting them up. So, um, but if you want to reach out to us, you can reach us on Twitter at BT Disney podcast, facebook.com slash behind the dreams podcast, Instagram at behind the dreams podcast, YouTube. We do have a YouTube. I don't even know what I put on there. Uh, email, <laughs> Behind the dreams podcast at gmail.com. I might put the videos of this up on the YouTube since I have one already, but we'll see. Um, yeah, I just want to thank everybody for listening and hopefully you enjoyed getting to know Jack as we'll be on this journey. Why well, I pointed the wrong way. There we go. Getting to know Jack here as we get yeah. ready to um, kind of revive the show here and uh, talk all things Disney and Disney parks. So. Thanks for listening and have a great rest of your day.